Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryant, and you at home watching us live on twitch.tv forward slash Linux Gamecast. It's another great week for Linux. Yes, Joe Bryant, plenty sure of fun is. things going on. Exciting stuff, open source, you name it, it's there. Uh, I want to thank everybody who joined me for Sunday Fun Day. We got yeah. a, we went on an adventure together because I messed up. Uh, we had a technical difficulties on Saturday because I was trying to track down something that was related to last Sunday's live stream. If you don't know, uh, I edit Linux Schemecast weekly. Where I'm doing my best to edit that live on Sunday. So people, you can pop in, ask your Linux questions, anything that you want about content creation, media production under Linux. And hey, maybe I can answer it and listen to some smooth jazz. And um, engineering issues. I completely did not have the first segment of Linux Gamecast Weekly recorded. So I did not have the video and I did not have the audio. So during that stream, we together got to sit down and go, how do we solve this problem? And you might notice that we ended up with a video and audio podcast of that so that was fun. And a couple other things, uh, just live hacking around when things go blam. I like being able to show everybody the thought process that goes into it. And also the like super non sexy, non shiny part of like, yeah, let's edit out some press noises. <laughs> Get comfortable. Let's go ahead and do this. But yeah. Okay. Then did you have to download your original Twitch VOD? <laughs> to, to Pretty pop close in there? to it. Yeah. Not the audio. <laughs> Not the audio. Oh, good. Yeah, because you have that backed up. <laughs> the, um, I <sighs> didn't even have the audio backed up to where my normal backup. I had to go to my second backup. Oh, wow. To, to that makes you nervous, huh? <laughs> and, um, man, it, 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 I, I like a puzzle like that, but then you don't like a puzzle like that, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I got up and I'm like, all right, let's get everything set up. And I try to go live about 10 a.m. Uh, my time, so so like 7 a.m. Um, West Coast time. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I get everything set up. I'm like, okay, let's sit down. Why am I missing a segment? Because we record segments on Saturday nights. We do the Steam segment, news segment, cheer acquisition, and then the hate mail segment. Yeah. I'm like, I'm missing. It. Oh, no. And I realized what I did. And I'm like, oh, boy. So that was fun. Had a good time. See you this Sunday. People are starting to show up and bring your Linux questions. I might have some answers for you or just come hang out. What do you want to do? Um, it's not shock and jive. Try to entertain the people. It's just like, Hey, pop in, you know, you want to see what, how the sausage is made. And, uh, if you're going to sit there and like content creation under Linux is impossible. Not only is it possible, I'll do it and stream it to you in 4k from Linux <laughs> on top of yes. everything else. <laughs> All right. So very much possible. Very much possible. Yay. Also, I'm trying not to buy a, a piece of a vintage audio hardware show. Oh, I see that in the show notes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're being so mean to me, Jill. There's, um, you're familiar, you know, you have like audio rack equipment, but then you have like a 500 series, which are like just little modules. You'll see like synth modules mm -hmm. that you can plug in and out. These aren't synth modules, but they made one like DBX made one called the 900 series, uh, like way back in the day. We're talking like early eighties and, uh. I don't need this thing, but there's this one seller on eBay. He's got one for like 140 bucks. And it's like, hey, we've got 140 bucks. I'm like, yeah, but the shipping on that would be crazy. Free shipping. I'm like, I don't need this thing, man. Oh, <laughs> tempting. So, Free shipping. No, I don't need it, though. But like, because <laughs> we're talking about like 40 year old stuff, right? Yeah. That's Do amazing. I need, no, I know why. Uh, did, did you catch my post that I made? Um, what was it? Yeah, this thing. See, I don't need yeah. this. I don't need that. <laughs> look at that. That's just a hole of problems. That's all <laughs> that is. That's just problems. Look, look at the oh, here. Here's why nobody wants these things. Look at that. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like this is all like you get a custom make pigtails and stuff like that. Uh -uh. Yeah. <laughs> and here's why. Here's why I don't want any of this crap. If you cut the uh, oh yeah, what do you think? Uh, Pizza. Pizza is still yeah. a vegetable, right? <laughs> Pizza in a cast iron pot in a microwave. <laughs> this evening, 
Um, I made this post uh, on the 7th. So whatever today is, right? Uh, the 8th. So I made this. Yeah. Uh, well, it might have been that morning. Um, I was up because I changed the thing in the studio. So I had to get a tone generator and plug everything in for these three pieces of analog hardware just to get the lights blinking correctly. And I'm not even joking around because that's the analog computers. They need to blink in a certain order in a certain way to make the audio sound a certain way. And uh, that took like almost two hours. I'm like, if these were just plugins, Jill, I would have been mm. in and out and I would have been done in like yeah. five minutes. <laughs> so, yes, I think you were all crazy, brilliant people who like playing with um, analog audio gear. I'm not one of them. <laughs> Not even a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm saying it. I'm sitting here. I'm like, oh, you want more of that? And I'm like, yeah, it'd be awesome. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> Track Media 2020 is out also. Yes, yes. We had fun playing it yesterday and Friday after our our mainstream of Track Media Stadium squared. <laughs> it was pretty good. We played around a little bit um, last Friday, like right when it was out, just to curiosity, yeah. like nibble on it just Get a little bit. I'm like, oh, can, we, can we play this? And uh, we did a bit more last night. And yeah, it's it's good. It's all right. Uh, it's free to play, but it's like what, like twenty bucks if you want to have a good time while you're playing it. Yeah, uh, twenty. Pretty, well, it's twenty three for the bucks. annual. Yeah, for the yearly uh, club membership. Easy to get set up. You don't really need experimental. It's in seven oh six right now. But one thing you might need to do is uh, make sure that you have Steamworks installed because if you don't, it's not going to install and. We were talking about this, I think, during the pre-show. You might not ever think about it. You're like, well, Steamworks, what is... It's something that's going to get installed anytime you install a Valve game. Yeah, I was going to say so, a Portal, Half-Life, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Which, to us, we're like, of course you have a Valve game installed. I didn't have it on Rectangle, though, because it, this was a purpose-built box. Uh, yeah, of course. And the only yeah. thing that was installed and in the account was the uh, Trackmania Squared. <laughs> so I had to uh, backtrack and figure out like, oh, that's what gets the, and of course it's got the Ubisoft launcher because we all love launchers. They add so much to the value of video games. Um, they look, you know, they're really exciting and really a value add when you <laughs> go to play a video game and instead of the game opening, another launcher for the game opens, then maybe uh, the yeah. game opens after that. It's so cool. I mean, I look forward to it each and every time. Thank you, Ubisoft. Thank you, EA, um, yeah. for providing these wonderful services with additional things and uh, friends lists that uh -huh. you know, really help <laughs> us out by making things even more complicated than they need to be. Yeah. Really looking out for Can't us. you just use the steam overlay, please? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That, that'd be too convenient. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've ran into that so many times and not yeah. even just Ubisoft, but like EA Activision. Uh, we ran into that with like Wolfenstein, like Jordan and I, we had to create like these separate accounts on these random. Uh, and I think what turns the knife even harder, Joe, right? Is now <laughs> they're all going, okay, well, we didn't mean to try to create our own game launchers and all this stuff. We'll come back to Steve, but they, but they want to keep the data collection bits without yeah, any, yeah, anything in return. Yeah. Well, I guess we got to be thankful that the games are even on Steam. So <laughs> at least there's that. Or they could be on GOG. Yeah. Uh, on GOG, yeah. <laughs> Good old games. <laughs> How about you, Jill Brent? How oh. about you? I heard, uh, yeah, it was weird, man. Like, Steve survived. Jill was like, yeah, he pulled through. It was kind of strange. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was really sick there. He's... He's back to work. He started back to work uh, last Thursday very, very carefully. And so he's back full time now. But he still gets tired quickly. So uh, we have to get him to bed early. <laughs> Poor guy. So anyways, I've been just going crazy getting ready for Scale 20X or the 20th annual Southern California Linux Expo. And it's going to take place March 9th through 12th. 2023 at the Pasadena Convention Center in Pasadena, California. And if you want to go, you can use promo code CHIX. I, I want to hear more about this Pasadena Convention Center in like Rome, New York. <laughs> Rome, New York? Well, I, it's like the Pasadena Convention Center in Pasadena. I'm like, you don't say. Hmm. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So it. Of course, it makes sense, right? <laughs> the Pasadena Convention Center. It used to be called, well, it's also the Pasadena Civic Center as well. But anyway, <laughs> it's part of the same complex. <laughs> so yes, in Pasadena, California. And if you would like 
to go, make sure to use promo code CHIX for 50% off your scale registration. That's courtesy of my booth and my group, the Linux Chicks of Los Angeles. So yay, you get 50% off your scale admission. And of course you can find me at the Linux Chicks LA booth. I'll also be at the Text Digital and Destination Linux booth and roaming around the Lutris booth. Matthew just got his booth. So we're, we're happy to hear that. And we're all pretty close to each other too, which is really nice. <laughs> Yay! And I think we went over this last week. It's not going to be where it was last year. Yeah, correct. Correct. It's not going to be at the LAX Hilton this time. It's going to be at the We always want to point Pasadena. these things out because sometimes you got to remember, <laughs> last year was somebody's first year. And they're going to show up and be like, hey, uh, I don't need to true. check where it's at. It's going to be where it was last year. No, it's not. So yeah, this is true. The reason it moved last year was because of the pandemic and we wanted to keep it small. So they got a smaller venue and they weren't expecting the crowds to fill the Pasadena Convention Center. But this scale, we're already looking really good uh, in numbers and a number of booths. It's going to be back to normal. T 20 tracks numbers. of programming on Friday and Saturday Tell again. Them Pasadena <laughs> sent you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So we're going to be talking about Slack. When I when I hear Slack, I think yeah. where? <laughs> yeah. So one of my favorite Slackware based live CDs. What is your yes. least favorite Slackware based live CD? What is the one you can't stand? Well, I don't. I don't dislike any of them. There's very few of them. My one of my favorites used to be desktop. Uh, uh, BSD, but that one's no longer around. <laughs> so, so, but this one still is. It had gone away a while. Now it came back. So yes, this is uh, one of my favorite Slackware-based live CDs or USB distros of all time, and it has an update. Slacks fifteen dot zero dot one and Slacks eleven dot six dot zero are now available based on Slackware Current and Debian. Linux 11.6 bullseye. Woohoo, bra bravo. We got Slack's Slackware back in the Slack's distro. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> I'm so happy to hear this. So Slack's is actually a compact, fast, and modern Linux operating system that combines a sleek design, and with, but with a modular approach with the ability to run directly from a USB flash drive without the need of installation. And both versions, and this is something really cool, both versions are available for both 32-bit and 64-bit processor architectures. Hooray to the developer of Slack. Awesome. And it, it actually, Slack boots into a simple desktop using the Flexbox window manager, which of course offers a small collection of applications, including the Chromium web browser, a text editor, and a calculator. And that is what is unique about this one is it's using Flexbox instead of the original Slacks with Slackware used uh, KDE. So that is unique in this distro, which I love because I love Flexbox as well. <laughs> so, and it has tens of thousands of pre-built packages and applica applications ready available through a Slack PKG, remember those days with Slackware, or Debian apt. And I wanted to talk about a little bit about the history of Slacks because it it's been a while since we've talked about it here on LWW be, because uh, we haven't had a new you know version in a while that's been Slackware based and uh, or just a new version in general. But so back in two thousand three. I was actually using this distro a lot to show my students both the power and speed of Linux running from a live CD. Yes, I, I did show them live CDs and USBs when USB uh, became popular. And the creator, Thomas M., had stopped development on the project until he returned with Slack's 9.2.1 in 2017. But this time, he made it Debian-based because... They said it was just a lot easier to make it Debian based and there wasn't a, a newer release of Slackware at that time. And I love Debian. It is one of my all time favorite distros of all time. I've got it on literally hundreds of my vintage and old computers. 
Uh, don't get me wrong. I love it. I love, love Debian. But Slacks, you know, was always Slackware based years ago. And there were very few Slackware based distros at that time. And that was my first distro was Slackware. And a lot of people's first distro uh, coming to Linux for the first time in the early 90s. So that was a thing. And now we have Slackware back in Slacks 15.0.1. And there's something else important about this new version is uh, the new Slacks versions use the newest Dyn file FS, which actually implements how persistent changes are stored on a USB drive. And that has been improved. It's, it's much fa faster, more performant, and you can now store up to 16 gigabytes of data instead of the older four gigabytes of data limitation. So that was a huge bump for a distro that's really intended to run from live USB. And uh, yeah, this is, I was just so excited because I, I actually have Slacks installed on some of my older machines. So uh, on the hard drives and you can boot it in a live environment from Lilo, no less, the Lilo bootloader <laughs> booting Slacks. <laughs> So that was a thing. <laughs> I'm taking a look at it. I'm reading over it. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. like, you know, have you ever wanted to use like Slack package and Debian? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you haven't? Oh, well, you know what? Too bad because now you can. And, you know, this is de based on Debian 11.4. So, which it's like, why? Why is it? Why is it got green on it, man? Like, I, I'm not feeling. I don't have the connection Jill has to it from the mm -hmm. past when it was Slackware based. If it's based on Debian at this point, it's just another. I don't. I don't mean to belittle it in any way. I'm not saying it's just another, but I mean it's another take. It's Debian with a body kit on it, and it still has 32 bit version though. But you know, yeah. so does Debian. And mm -hmm. what I really want to talk about is the usefulness of live distributions in 2023, because that used to be like a big thing. Now it, it's changed. We don't think about it these days, but being able to bring up a Linux distribution on a CD, not even a DVD, I mean, we can afford yeah. DVD burners <laughs> back then, but a CD that was revolutionary. Oh, absolutely. You could now uh, use it on machines that were locked down, you know, <laughs> Companies that lock down Windows, I'll just pop in that Linux user. It was a little CD, portal, and you know? persistent storage was an issue. Why? Because yeah. well, thumb drives didn't exist at the time. So, yeah. uh, you know, things like this that have come along and, you know, being able to save to thumb drive, that was an evolution in the process as well. Yeah. And having thumb drives. And we don't think twice about it in 2023 mm -hmm. because I think every, you would be hard pressed to find a distribution that didn't have a live version you know um yeah, even absolutely debian oh yeah it's like hey do you do you want to like boot debian kind of sort of in like a weird mechanical mode and play around with them like no i want to install it but you know I, out of the box i installed ubuntu recently the jellyfish version and it booted into like the full gui of like hey here's the desktop yeah. play around would you like to install by the way i'm like yeah that's why i put the thing in to do it <laughs> yes <laughs> So yeah, just keeping it alive, keeping it kicking. And uh, you can go check out all of that at slacks.org. Mm -hmm. Back, and you can also buy a mini DVD. How retro yeah, is that? Yeah, I know, they still offer that. That's so cool. I, I think it's, it's just awesome. This is awesome. the perfect <laughs> gift for somebody in your life that knows nothing about computers. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Secure, AES encryption, look at that. That's kind of neat though. I like that. Yeah. I'm a data traveler to thousand. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do some kind of fun. Hope. Yes. Let, let's see how this works. Boom. Look at this. Okay. Let's watch this. So you I might can. notice I that I I'm in my um, downloads folder. We're doing this live, <laughs> by the way. And of course, we're in the Bob directory. Why are we in a Bob directory? Because if you don't have a file structure in your zip file, guess what, kids? I'm going to name your project Bob. I am. That works. <laughs> and we're talking about Chromium running inside your terminal. That's right. From Carbon Carbon Yell. Yell? 
Carbonyl, <laughs> I think. <laughs> it's a Chromium-based browser built to run in a terminal. Read the blog post. Oh, there's a blog post. You know what? Let's go check out your blog post. Uh, yeah. You can move the cursor. It's got pixels and stuff and all that. I mean, it, it, it's what it says. It's what it says. I mean, it uses... You know, it's nice, big, chunky pixels, but I mean, it can do 60 FPS and all that fun stuff. It's light for Chrome. It's under 200 megabytes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you know, I I, I know this person's out there. You know, you hate it. You don't like it because you're allergic to fun. But you know what? Get over it because the rest of us, we're just going to have fun playing with our little pixel videos in just a minute and deal with it. You know? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It cannot... Uh, a couple of things. Uh, It doesn't support a lot of modern web standards. Can't run uh, WebAssembly. Okay, that's fine. And, uh, yeah, he even brings it up, brings up a nice point here. He's like, what about Browse? Yeah, okay. It's a lot more heavy compared to yeah, Browse. You know, Browse, I mean, yeah. it's like 50 times more CPU intensive, but it's also a lot more cooler, a lot more, more cool, yeah, infinitely more cooler. Cool. <laughs> Let, let's, t- let's check out LinuxEmcast.com. There we go. Here we go. <laughs> mm. Let's, uh, <laughs> Scroll down. Let's go. Let's go check out our uh, most recent video. What's that? Are you gonna play YouTube? Yes, I am. Look at that. Yep. There you go. <laughs> you you almost expect to hear a fell in love with a girl to start Aww. in the background for the white stripes because that looks like that video. <laughs> yes, it's not quite as cool as ASCII art, but it's it's still fun nonetheless. <laughs> LGC in Japan. Coming to yeah. you live. Um. <laughs> yeah, so I think it's cool, Vin, because it actually supports um, uh, lots of web APIs, including WebGL, WebGPU, audio and video playback, and animations, which is really nice. And it is it is snappy. It actually starts in less than a minute, normally. <laughs> less than a second, I'm sorry. A and minute. A minute. <laughs> <laughs> in less than a second unless you're running the um i also ran the um the, the docker uh image you can run the docker image in the name of a website and that takes a little longer because it's got a got to download all the the modules and but it it idles at zero cpu usage which is really awesome <laughs> what's the site and, we should go to bing doesn't work very well oh, oh okay so uh Let's go to distrowatch.com. <laughs> let's see. Let's see what that looks like. Here's okay. Yahoo. <laughs> Distrowatch. All right, let's check out Distrowatch. Yeah. <laughs> Where I discovered Slacks <laughs> many years ago. <laughs> Look at that. Uh... Look at that. It did it. It's readable and you can see the ads. <laughs> you can see the ads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. Uh latest packages. Yeah, I mean I guess it's like oh, serviceable. Nice. Like, yeah. Yeah, it again, is, the, the, you do this for the fun. You yeah. you basically you're going to do this mainly to go watch a YouTube video on pixels. And, yeah. Um, so cool. Be uh, done with it. Have fun with it. All this is going to be in the show notes for those of you watching at home. Yeah. Like, I think you're listening. Like this makes no sense. Watch the video or just go uh, grab a copy in the show notes. And yeah, like much like Jill, when I saw it, I was like Docker, I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, okay, fine. Good. Yeah. <laughs> you provided some Linux binaries because I'm not pulling up Docker to play around with your pixel browser, yes. but I will run it in the terminal. Yeah. And I thought and that was kind of neat. It, it really is. And being able to watch YouTube in a terminal browser is really cool. Uh, I used to do that with links and e-links. And um, I would I would do it by having a custom FFmpeg script whenever I, I clicked on the URL for YouTube and would have them play an ASCII art, which was <laughs> which I loved. And uh, but this is cool because you don't have to do all that; it just plays right from the browser. <laughs> nice. Um. Yeah, I'm. <laughs> does it work with like media though? I've che- I've only checked uh, YouTube. And Wait, I did. Well, uh, uh, well I'm thinking like since gift. it's like, <laughs> well, I'm trying stuff out, people. I, I I'm getting sidetracked because I'm at the best website in the no zombo.com. <laughs> I'm at zombo.com where you can in fact do anything, and uh, I can't tell if it's we're we're getting audio. 
Oh, wait. No. All the capture. Just showing up blank. Yeah. Output yeah. devices is not putting out any Zombocom audio. That's yeah, unfortunate. It, can't. it doesn't support the code for that. Maybe website. it does because I clicked that. Oh. Yeah. Now we're. Oh, no. It's saying things. Hang on, people. I it is. Be, uh, oh, awesome, Vin. Game audio. Can I make this work? Give me a second. Uh, okay. I'm persistent, people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Leave it to we, Vin. To can get we get work. Zombocom playing through the Pixel browser, everyone? Let's go to. <laughs> Game audio. Uh, mm -hmm. If I mix, okay, we're gonna we're gonna come out game audio, and we're gonna move that into music. <laughs> Live in production. <laughs> yeah, there it is. There you go, everyone. Zombocom in a browser. Oh, that's cool. Metapixels. Hey, you'll you have to do the hamster dance next, Ben. No, I don't, Jill. <laughs> I thought about that. I thought about that. I was like, oh, no. Uh, I, was like, I, don't, I don't think the internet's ready for it. Yeah. <laughs> mm. So, um... But pretty good for, you know, a first version of the, of the program. <laughs> it's a silly thing. I, I'm, I'm, yeah. I, I'm sorry if you're at home, like, with your arms crossed, going, you're dumb. Like, just have some fun man like yeah. part of doing this stuff is like so we get to play with uh, silly things like that and that's an awesome silly thing i like it it's pixels we just got to see pixelated zombo come we had a good time yeah for those of us that live in the terminal that's a, an op an awesome option <laughs> it's not you'll never use it <laughs> don't 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 lie to yourself kids they'll be like well no no i i use this all i was like no you don't, no, you don't. We, <laughs> yeah. we know you don't 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 don't, don't, don't say you do. We know. Um, <laughs> it, it, but it's one of those cool things you can do in the terminal, though. It's a yeah. party trick. It's like, hey, come here, look at this. I'm like, oh, that's neat. You know, it's right up there with, um, like, wobbly windows, right? Yeah, absolutely. Remember Fun on the desktop. inviting people over to the house and like, here, check this out. Wiggle, 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 hey, wiggle. this is what I can do in the terminal. It, it's just expanded because of this uh, <laughs> web browser. <laughs> Pretty cool. And I was like, yeah, that's nice. Uh, my, I, I, I don't need a terminal from my operating system. It's not that primitive. <laughs> don't you have GUIs? No, man. Wobbly Windows will... Uh, well, this is what we need. We need to bring back more... Wobbly Windows should have been... Should be default on everything by 2023. I don't care what window manager you're using. Windows should yeah. wobble. <laughs> Period. And they should melt. And they should... Uh <laughs> catch on fire <laughs> yeah what is the uh that guy's uh well uh, spiritual successor to uh the flaming windows uh there was an update yeah. to that like last week like yeah, there, there, there that's was. like constantly getting updates and guys like yes i'm making your windows burn you know the burninators yeah <laughs> for what was that in compton back then back in the day oh yeah yeah ah <laughs> uh, ah uh, yeah bring back the cubes the 3D mm -hmm. cubes, those we were We love neat. the 3D spinning cubes that could, we could show everyone, this is why Linux is better than Windows. <laughs> Didn't realize that, like, that's a dumb idea. But, yeah. <laughs> so, maybe you want to tell the world about your next greatest and latest dumb idea. And you can do that in podcast format. Well, mm -hmm. I made a thing for everybody. I've been teased it up, down, left, and right because I wanted to get it right. Podcasting on Linux, mixing with Reaper, plus demo files, so you can play at home, which was very important for you to be able to take this as a little bit of a guide. It's a quick and dirty guide for making a podcast template, creating virtual channel strips, and finding out what luffs are. You know, what is luffs? Baby, don't hurt me. <laughs> and I'm going to show you how to make one of these, because you see that? That's channel strip. That's not a digital audio workstation, and it probably doesn't run Linux, to the best of my knowledge. And um, we're going to make one of those digitally inside of a DAW. I'm going to be using Reaper, but of course, you can use Outdoor. You could use Mixbus. You could use Bitfig. Anything you want. Kind of walking you through just the basic principles of, you know, this is going to be your preamp. You're going to be doing DSing. You're going to be doing compression, downward expansion. You're going to be adding EQ to that. How to keep mm -hmm. things balanced out. Then we're going to install the DAW. We're going to download some free plugins. We're going to create a podcasting session. And I'm going to show you how to do basic audio routing. 
inside of Reaper, how to load audio tracks. I'm going to give you the audio tracks. Um, myself, Pedro, and Jordan talking, yammering about video games. So you can set them up in your own virtual channel strip. And uh, at the very end, we're going to export a podcast. At the end of the day, you're going to have something that is going to be just as good or at least on par as anything that I'd normally put out. And plus, you want to talk about having a bunch of cool windows and stuff like that bouncing around on your computer. You can't get any cooler than this. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> if somebody walked in your room when you had this, they'd think you knew what you were doing. I'm like, whoa, what's going Look on? Look at all those beautiful equalizers Ven has. <laughs> so, and most importantly, I'm going to show you um, the basic concept of what lofts are. Nice. This is what your integrated lofts and how to get that effect because um, the big thing people are always going to come back and like, well, there's a, I could hit this one button, you know, because there's a bunch of Windows plugins that will try to smash everything and normalize everything and smash it down and make it exactly like 16 lofts and all that. What I'm interested in showing you is what's behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. what, what's the underpinning of that automation? So you can take that knowledge and mix and match and create your own sound. That's the cool part. And you can do nice. it all under Linux. It's not going to cost you anything. Nothing in that video. Not a single thing in that video costs you a dime. Mm -hmm. It's completely free. Go check it out. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Learn something or at least do me the favor of showing up and tell me I'm doing something wrong. Aw. There you go. <laughs> You I are now master, Ven. No, I'm not. You'll never hear me say. You'll never hear me say I know what I'm doing because I don't think I know what I'm doing. I'm learning. <laughs> yeah, we're all learning. <laughs> Run away from anybody. I say this in the video like five or six times, Jill. Mm -hmm. If anybody tells you that you can only do something one way, especially in the realm of audio, oh, never yeah. listen to that person again. Absolutely. Run away from them. Go away. Yeah. Absolutely. It's the same in, in, with all the arts. <laughs> it's, uh, it's interpretation. If you like what yeah. comes out, and I know curious people get upset with me because I'm like, what, what's the job here? Let me tell you what your job is when it comes to audio production. You're going to turn knobs until it sounds good. That's it. Mm -hmm. that, that's 100% your job as an audio engineer. You're turning knobs until things sound good. Yeah. And things sound good, job done. And uh, the learning part is finding the way that or you know reducing the amount of knobs you have to turn or the amount of time you spend turning the knobs or you know how you turn the knobs to get certain sounds without having to go through multiple iterations that, that that's the knowledge part and it's it's fun it's a puzzle mm -hmm. that's why i like it yeah I like taking yeah. stuff and mixing it around. And it's amazing what we can do in 2023, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Under Linux, too. Like, there's no, we're not having to run wine or anything like that. Yep. All this stuff's available on Linux. It's a good time. Yeah. <clears throat> Make sure to, to watch all of Ven's upcoming uh, podcasting basics videos, too. It's going to be incredibly useful. <laughs> I'm making more? Yes. <laughs> Can you show me the schedule I don't know about? Well, you said you're going to start a <clears throat> podcasting basic series, so. <laughs> Ta-da. <laughs> uh, I, I look forward to Jill's videos. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't really have anything for that. Um, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we do thank you for your support, though. Um, yeah. Your support allows me to do stuff like this and a little behind the scenes, make everything a little bit better. Well, I don't expect anybody to show up and say, hey, man, thanks for helping out. That really clarified some things. I do expect certain shows to probably start sounding a little bit better. But if you want to help me help them head over to patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Get a bunch of cool stuff in return access to our Discord. Live and uncut up that's episodes. Access to your own custom RSS feed. And a gang of other things. That's not your, you know, that's not your dice. Go over to LinuxGamecast.com. Check the support button. 
We got merch. We got PayPal donations. We got wish lists. I got stuff I need in the studio. Jill's probably got stuff that plaques and keyboard holders. <laughs> Plushy penguins. You name it. <laughs> it's there. We even have um, crypto because, yeah. you know, <laughs> it, that's the cyberpunk currency. That's what all the cool kids are using. No, no, no. Um, Bitcoin's worth nothing. Give me all your Bitcoin. We'll convert it into stuff. Uh, <laughs> good times, fun times. Come hang out with us on Tuesdays. And I should say me and Jill on Tuesdays and Fridays. Mm-hmm. We do track mania. Uh, Jordan is around on Thursdays for Jorderlands. He's going through Borderlands 3. Wednesdays, we do this. Saturdays, we do Linux Gamecast Weekly. Sundays, uh, you just come hang out with me as I'm editing shows, ask your questions. We're going to do little Linux education bits. And uh, if you were watching, watching what I was up to on Sunday, like if you see the amount of videos I have in work, like in pre production right now, it's kind of crazy. So, wow. <laughs> exciting stuff coming your way. I do want to thank uh, somebody who showed up during a Sunday stream. Our new patron. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kai Rilo is Kai our Rilo. new patron. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is he a sea monster or she? He is. <laughs> okay. Um, showed up and uh, they're doing Sunday stream. And that's what I'm doing. It's like, hey, so you're doing this under life? To me, I'm doing it under life. We just asked some questions, you know, just why I'm there, right? And like, hey, can I do this and do this and this? How does this work? What are your thoughts on this? And somebody who also used DaVinci Resolve. And we had it back and forth. And of course, I'm nice. never going to miss an opportunity to just poo-poo on how bad uh, DaVinci Resolve's audio is under Linux in the sad, sad state of it. Um, but, you know, you take the good with the bad. There's no such thing as a perfect product. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yo, man, I got to get to go. I got to go to Betty's in uh, Europe. Uh, and he's like, but I'm in Discord. I'll chat with you later. And I'm like, sure enough, I'm like, boom, guy popped in. That's cool. He's been having a good time in Discord. Yes, he has. Hanging sure out with has. us. Talking about a bunch of fun and exciting things. Now, we're a little bit late, but we still got enough time to talk about doing something. <laughs> okay. What? What picture does Ben have available for this? <laughs> I'm too short on time, Jill. Oh, okay. Jill, I have a podcasting no. series I'm working on right now, okay? Yes, I don't have time you to. Are. It's a whole new additional thing. I don't have time to look up new pictures. Come on. Uh, what are we talking about? An affordable reflow oven with smart features. Yeah, now, I, I cool. thought, yeah, I thought this was like super cool. Just, yeah. I, I ran across it. And, yeah, you, you pop the card in the oven, right? I know. Put your I GPU know. in the oven. It'll, it'll fix it. Because you know what? The internet has told you that on more than one occasion. Uh, you know it has. And you're like, hmm, maybe, you know, logically it makes sense. You know, do a quick little reflow. The problem is when you do stuff like that, things can go wrong mm-hmm. <laughs> real oh, quick. Yeah. Uh, and if you don't believe me, just ask any microwave pizza that's been tossed in the oven at 4 a.m. after a night of drinking. <laughs> yes. Things can go bad. They sure can. Uh, fortunately, Dan here has taken a few extra steps uh, that will aid in the protection of your silicone. You basically set this thing up uh, for a Raspberry Pi Pico W plus, you know, a little bit of know-how. He was able to set up a reflow oven on the cheap. And I mean, this is doing a standard five-stage reflow process that you could go through. And most importantly, you end up with a toaster oven that's running a web server. Jill, how cool yeah. is that? Oh, <laughs> this is amazing. And not only that, it was a food toaster oven <laughs> originally, and now it's set up to bake PCBs in, you know? <laughs> so could I take my old GPU and, and see if I could get it to work better <laughs> after I put it in the oven, like Linus uh, from Linus Tech Tips did with some old GPUs <laughs> to get them working? <laughs> I mean, it might work for a little bit. I mean, <laughs> yeah. the, the logic behind that is it's going to take care yeah. of like a cold solder joint or something like that. Oh, yeah. no, you didn't. No, you didn't. You punk. You made this a YouTube short. I don't like this guy uh, yes. anymore. Never mind. Yes. Too bad. No, I watched that. Yeah. No, I, um, I retract it, every it positive. <laughs> no, too late. I retract every positive thing I just said. Uh, oh, no. This is All awesome. because this vertical video is uh, pox upon society. It's wrong. <laughs> it's bad. Um. Yeah, there'll be a link in the show notes for all the project info because, like, this is something that you can stick together for like, uh, what, 150 euro? Yeah, it's cheap. 
<laughs> and that's a lot better than, well, I don't know exactly where I'm at. Now, the one thing I, I like about this, he was like, so I got my dad to help me because he didn't want me to burn down the house. Yes, <laughs> yes. So they made sure to, to make us safe. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah. Which is also a good idea. This, like a reflow oven, I don't really mess around with because you know I bought a hot air re reworking station, which mm -hmm. is just you know a hair dryer on steroids. If you've ever watched Lewis Rosman, you're familiar with them. <laughs> little nozzle, hot air nozzles. But something like this, I mean, if you have the need for it, if, you want, if you're going to be doing a bunch of surface mount and you don't want to worry about chasing things across the room that you accidentally hit, yeah, this will work. <laughs> It'll get done. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like the idea of it. And I love um, repurposing old electronics, be them kitchen or not. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, how, how, how expensive is one of these uh, reflow ovens in real life? I mean, thousands of dollars for one of those? I have no idea. <laughs> I, I would never buy a reflow. I've never even looked. <laughs> But I'm sure because, you know, it's a kind of a boutique, uh, you know, not everybody's like, you know, let's see, I need some sugar, I need a six pack of Coke, going to need a reflow oven. Yeah, that's not a common thing that you pick up when you're out at the market. So probably pretty expensive being able to do that at home uh, with the timer. And it's better than trying to do it with a stopwatch because I know somebody's sitting around going, well, you know, I could just like get a timer out. Yeah, but you forget squirrel, right? Mm hmm. Squirrel. <laughs> oh no and instead of being a pizza that you're like oh man i lost a pizza you have like silicon melting in your oven like that's probably not a good one yeah probably not something you want to do <laughs> all right joe we gotta get out of here. yes all right <laughs> yes time I'm to go until <laughs> until next week but we have lots of awesome patrons to hey we got zombo common a web browser right yeah that was really really cool in production too you got to see it live <laughs> so thanks again to kai rilo borovic for uh, becoming a patron woohoo and to our advisors our theron is one of those and he's in chat right now our executive producers uh, super dust out one of our Chicago people, and to our wonderful sea monsters, including Kai Rilo and Nubbin, and our Death Notes, uh, Benjamin. <laughs> too many people. I can't. I can't name them all. They go by too quickly. <laughs> all our wonderful patrons. Episode three hundred sixty-five. Hey, yes, it's awesome. Thank you and for watching. <laughs> now, I'm, now I'm looking at reflow ovens. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Not even joking. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. So I was right thousands of dollars.